artists have given us many images of madness. What it looks like from the outside and what it must feel like to suffer from a disorganizing psychiatric illness. But madness is something we as physicians are still trying to understand. Much of what we do know comes from listening to people whose lives have been disrupted by mental disorder. People such as those you're about to hear and see, all of whom have close experience with schizophrenia, which remains one of the most tragically elusive of diseases. It's just like a fracture. You don't know where it's going to fragment next, and, you, and it's so unpredictable that that part of the illness. I mean, you, you can understand. You break your arm, you put it in a cast, it gets better. But the mind doesn't heal. This just doesn't get better when you are as severely disabled as Mitch was. And that's the difficult part, because you can't touch it, and you can't feel it, and it's not black and white, and it's very gray, and it's intangible, and it's mushy, and, and you think you got it, and it shoots away, and, and, and there's so little known about it. It's just not a it's not like anything else in this whole world. I mean, cancer, at least you die from. You know there's going to be an end. Mitchell couldn't even die. It took a long time for him to be able to get to that. The schizophrenic world is sensational. It's, it's highs and lows. It's struggle, monumental struggle. The everyday world is just kind of casual. Just little problems that you saw. And you go on to the next one, without ever being any great stupendous happenings or any real lows to fight against. It's a completely different entity. A schizophrenic, I never know an peace. Never. I never know, it's torment. If I wake up in the morning, like I did this morning, once in a while, feeling okay, I say, good God, I must have really gone crazy. I have not tortured. I must have really lost my mind. I broke down when I was 19. I, went, I signed myself into a Toronto hospital in agony and fear and half out of my mind. My emotions and my memories were dead, and my responses in view of the world were that of a 12-year-old child for 30 years. I felt as if my whole body and mind were on fire in flames, irritated. I was, I, my, my, I was almost a physical torment, and I could not communicate with anybody. I was friendless for 30 years. Listening to Tzvi's rational account of his illness, it would be easy to believe that schizophrenia is some figment of the physician's imagination, that it is just some way of defining people who are a little bit different, who are suffering only a little bit. But the fact is that the schizophrenic frequently suffers from very disabling symptoms, delusions, frightening hallucinations, a compendium of social difficulties, a gap of feeling between himself, herself, and the world, distortions, and even degrees of physical pain and suffering that are very hard for the rest of us to understand. When I'm psychotic, I have no feeling in my body. I have no relation to my body. I feel like I'm a disembodied soul. I'm in contact with fairy kings, delusionary people, Sometimes I'm not even aware that there are normal people around me. I'm so caught up in the fantasy. Um, and I think 
sometimes I thought I was Peter Rabbit and I would only eat rabbit food. And I thought I had my magical powers. I could make people disappear. Sometimes, I, like when I thought I was Brother Michael, uh, Michael the Archangel, I thought I had the powers to heal people. Um, other times I feel like I've had electricity floating through my body and that it's controlling me and then if I don't keep control of it, that it could kill people. And that was terrifying. The devil and, and the compulsiveness that you are evil and must be punished is there. And the compelling nature of, of the evilness is, is overwhelming. It's, um, it's scary. It's very frightening. And it's terrifying. And I, I can remember, too, once I thought I was being punished by having bees swarm all over me and being stung. And I felt that I was being stung. And it was terrifying. And it's real. It's not imaginary. It's real at the time. I classify myself as a vegetable because I'm unproductive. But I have a tremendous craving in me to be productive, to do something worthwhile. Not just to do something small, but to do something worthwhile. I dramatize. That's when I start to dramatize my situation, my loneliness, my suffering, and uh, then I start getting grandiose ideas. I'll write about them. I'll write, I'll make, I'll, I'll make a big story about this. I'll write about, uh, about, well, about what kind of mistake God made when he made the human being. Everything was fine until the human being came along, <laughs> because I'm one of them. It must be very difficult for everyday life to be normal be functional for someone whose experience of the world, whose perceptions are often distorted or even unreal. Sandy takes medication to help her control her delusions, but it doesn't work all the time. It's usually a sign that I'm losing control when I start having these conversations with myself. Sometimes they even take a political issue, like a strike and the right to strike, and I'll argue both sides of it in my head, or out loud, and get quite heated uh, discussions going, and the pros and cons. And it's things like that that I know that I'm starting to lose control. fortunate that I have a job now where my boss knows of my illness. He's working with me with it. I'm just beginning to get glimpses of what it's like to be on the outside world, what it's like to have a social life, to have the work to go to every day, to do the things that ordinary people do. Fortunately, and this is a glimmer of hope, with the techniques of the new drugs and an increased emphasis on social therapies, about 85% of people who've been diagnosed as suffering from schizophrenia receive some kind of useful help. And they get by. Some do better than get by. You'll be able to input directly from these and uh, reconcile directly to the bank statement. So I'm sure you have everything here. If you need some extra forms, I have some too. You know where they are. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Bye, thank you. When I started my job, I was terrified. I, um, I didn't know what to expect, and, and I wasn't sure I could do it. I, I panicked. 
I didn't sleep. Couldn't eat. Um, I went in with the most confidence I could muster the first day, I can remember. And I wasn't sure what I was doing. Um, I worked on journal entries for about a month, and then I was in hospital for a month. It was just too overwhelming. I started working about an hour a day, I think. Eventually, last year I got up to five hours a day. That was a real milestone. But to work any more than that, I can't handle it. It's just too much pressure. My coworkers have led normal lives. They talk about normal things. My life has been wrapped up in the hospital for some 17 years and therapy, and that's been my world. I haven't shared in their world. So I feel there's a gap between us. For me to do the everyday things is an effort. Even being responsible for getting up in the morning, responsible for cooking three meals a day, responsibility for keeping your basic hygiene up, or for keeping your place tidy, is more than you can really handle. Because your um, mind is uh, preoccupied with other things. And it's not so much, I don't think, a lack of motivation as a lack of being able to concentrate and remember when you've done these things or when you haven't done them. And sometimes you can just focus on the one thing, like getting to work in the morning. You don't think about cleaning your teeth or washing your face or, or making your lunch. You just got to get there. That's all you can focus on, just the one thing. Without my medication, I would lose control of my emotions. I would lose control of my mind. With my medication, I'm able to work and carry on a fairly normal life. My thoughts are controlled. I don't have racing thoughts. I don't have scary thoughts. I don't have bad thoughts. It's, uh, it's a remarkable thing that they've developed something to control it. Sometimes I felt like going off my medication because it's a nuisance. I don't like giving needles. I don't like taking pills. It's something I have to do, but I don't like doing it. And sometimes I feel it's not necessary. Why do I have to bother? And there are side effects. I, my leg twitches. It bothers me most when I stand certain positions, but it's small. It's a small price for the benefits you reap. My father died six years ago, and uh, I came home full of pity for my mother. I knew she was all alone. Uh, and little by little, she infringed more and more on my personal life. She started doing my laundry for me, feeding me, reminding me, you got to go here, you got to go there. Every time I go out on the street, she scrutinizes me. That was a horrible experience. You scrutinize me, your scarf sticking out, your shoe had laces untied, to the point where I hated her and it drove me mad to come home. My mother's in the hospital now. I go shopping for myself, I cook for myself. At first it came as a tremendous shock, the realization I'm just like a child. Not like a young boy, but like a child, a baby. All because she tried to be too much of a mother. 
And I tried to be too much of a son not to her either. I was brought up as a lone Jew in, in, in the Catholic community. I was totally isolated even from my own people. So when you're isolated and you're dramatic, you exaggerate things a lot. Uh, and, 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 and when you're alone, the fears and the frights can become awfully, grow into something awfully big. So my way of getting out of my grown-in ghetto of terror and fear was becoming Harry. I changed my name from Svi to Harry. Harry is the English version of Svi. And I tried to, to straighten out a lot of my hatreds and, uh, and antisocial feelings. I actually, uh, it was antisemitism that drove me to it. Svi is the Jewish kid who's good nature, who likes people, who's lonely, who's got play, who has no playmates. And she was the guy who wanted to be friends with people and, and to, to have fun with people. Harry was the guy who left home and had nothing to do, who cut himself off from his parents. All in an attempt to, to get well, to come out of my regression, to, to, to stop hating, to stop fearing, to be able to get my memory back, to, to find peace in life. In, uh, in your uh, that practical camera, the uh, one for $99? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've got a few models, one in the window. Yeah. Well, I want something with a built in light in here. Well, we have them as low as $69 with yeah. a meter. With a meter, eh? Yeah, that's the least expensive model oh. that does have a meter. That's all right. Since the last time you had a camera? About 15 years. Back in those days, you generally had to buy your meters separately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, it really was really fun. Creative tragedy. I had an icon. I was heading for Kingston to do some photography. I just stood there and it dropped out of my hand. I got so badly smashed inside the diaphragm mm -hmm. that all I could get was ten dollars for the camera, ten dollars for the lens, a two hundred buck camera. Oh, that is a shame. Oh, it was really hard running. Unfortunately, schizophrenia is a chronic, long-term, often lifelong illness. Its progress can be marked by long periods of calm, but they may be interrupted by periods of great pain and disorganization, times when the symptoms become overwhelming and life goes out of control for the schizophrenic. When, when you're losing control of your mind and your emotions, you, you keep a very close guard on it. You hold on tight trying to maintain that control. And it's a real struggle. And, and you you struggle as hard as you can until you reach the point that you lose, you've lost control. And hospital's a safe safety valve. You can let go and kind of let things take their course temporarily until you can start fighting again. contact with reality. I don't know it's time to take my medication. I have no sense of time. I don't know it's time to go to bed. I have no sense of sleep. I don't know when to eat. And these things are taken care of for me in the hospital. It's a protective environment. It's necessary when I'm sick. They're released inmates. Years ago, they didn't let them out. 
Now they let them out. There's very little difference. You see different things, but inside you're still inside that hospital. You're incapacitated, and you feel it. Tzvi sometimes calls himself Harry. Sometimes he calls himself Tzvi. But this doesn't mean that schizophrenia is an illness of split personality, as it's often assumed. That schizophrenics are people with double identities. Schizophrenia is probably a group of disorders. And it may even be that we will ultimately discover that Tzvi Harry, Sandy, and Mitch have been suffering from different disorders which at the present time we group together as schizophrenia. I am so involved in my sickness that uh, I find it extremely difficult to relate to anybody except somebody at the Clark. Well, we don't have to talk about sickness. All we can do is sit and be sick together. I said it amounts to no questions asked, no, 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 no punches pulled, nothing. Hi, guys. How are you? Are we all set? Yeah. Are we going to take in the food? Maybe do you want some juice? Hey, has anybody been to any shows lately? Yes, I have. I uh, seen um, Julie Andrews' movie. What was it? The, La the Man Who Loved Woman, yes. Aren't you really fond of Julie Andrews? Uh, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> now it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen her in 1964 in the subway. She sat beside me, and she was reading the book Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. And in Come on, really? What's the word? Who are they? And I said in 1965, when I get up from work, you know. East Warriors is just food. I said in 1967 in Montreal, during the Expo. And I seen her after my grandfather's funeral. She's a famous actress, isn't she? <laughs> How is your mother sweet? Improving. Yeah, it's a terrible thing to say. I get the idea when she comes back. It comes all the mothering and the babying, which I can't stand, which I let her do past and say nothing. But after she left, I, I, my whole mind just, I became Harry again. From, from, from 10 years ago. The guy who was on his own. And it had a tremendous uh, effect on me because uh, here I was, uh, up to now I've been three, and all of a sudden, I wasn't a deliberate thing. I started to call myself Harry again, without realizing it. And, uh, anyway, I've learned, it was a much smarter Harry than, than I used to know. But, uh, Which do you prefer, Harry or Svee? Neither. Neither. Well, by me, Svee and Harry are two different worlds. Two different worlds completely. Do you think those two worlds are beginning to come together a little bit, Svi? Yeah, I'm much to my upset, yes. They are coming together. Uh, for one thing, uh, I began to realize how badly I'm neglected from taking care of myself. I didn't realize it until a few days ago. I said, why well, should I? I won't do it. Then I automatically reflex, I'll let her do it for me. I'll let her do it, my mother. I saw the, I, I, I became, parasitically dependent. All I want is a person who can't keep it, like in a wheelchair, a guy in a wheelchair. And living by myself is a hell of a lot more easy for me. It's miserable, I get funny feelings, but uh, in the long run, uh, it gives me back the leg I lost when uh, I came home. I became a one-legged man. I know everyone has spoken at different times about the concern about their mothers getting older and not being able to take care of themselves. How are you going to feel if something happens to them? Uh, I'm bitter enough to, I'll, I'll withdraw. A lot of my I security will be gone because standing against my mother, I not know, no matter what happens to me now, I, I know I'll always have a place to get a meal or a roof mm. over my head and other things, you know, security. My mother goes, 
Not only that, that it's somebody me, in you know? your life. Yeah. No matter how bad or good it is, there's somebody else in your life outside of yourself. That's what I'm afraid of becoming all alone in my life. You know, you know, in my in my world. You ever feel the bad need to talk to somebody when nobody's around? Well, how do you cope with not that? Not too often, sweet. I do. No? I, I do sometimes, but not too often. Mm -hmm. I don't usually feel that I mean, need. I, uh, you know? I shoot my mouth off too much. I, uh, if I got nobody to talk to, I'm really finished. Because I feel so damn isolated, even with my mother. Some, uh, it's a uh, psychotherapy shit. But, uh, but, uh, Well, when I'm alone, I, I I get rid of you. I want to be sick or dead. I, I did. I don't know how to handle it now. It'll be different now. But when you're all alone, your mind starts to work different. Your mind works in a different way altogether. Like, how do you feel about that? I forgot the question. <laughs> I got to pour my body. Oh yes, about loneliness. Yes, <laughs> I uh, I usually I usually am lonely at home because I always shut <coughs> excuse me shut myself in the room and uh, do nothing. You know, sometimes I do reading, but uh, I don't see why schizophrenic can't be helped to achieve a, a status other than a ward of the state. To be a little, something more than just schizophrenic. Or it's, it's almost like people being lab labeled consumers. Not people, but consumers. So uh, I'm a consumer of psychiatry. The, the working man is it's a consumer society. What kind of bullshit is this? I'm not like other people, but I, I want to be something like other people. Something like them. I can't be all the other. Like, well, I want to be something like them. And for me to lock myself away in a, in a closet and say I'm schizophrenic and that's it. I can't do that. That's, that's just, it's, it's cutting your throat without a knife. Recently, they started putting me on the computer. And unlike other new tasks that have started, I didn't feel any stress. I just sort of slipped into the job and I really enjoyed it. So I feel it's a real accomplishment for me to be able to slip into something new without having a, a setback. And I've had People put limits on, on the pressures so that I can give my very best what I have to offer. I have something to offer society. But it may not be as much as the next guy. But I feel my contribution is valuable and I want to offer it when I can. There are times when I can't when I'm sick and I have to be in hospital. But when I'm well, I have something I want to give. I want to share. I want to be part of the world. I've never had a, a real boyfriend because I was never sexually active or attracted to anyone. It was part of the numbness of the body. You're really aware of your body. It's, it's either dissociated from you completely in psychosis, and your arms feel separate from your body, your legs feel separate from your body, or else it's just not there. It's just something that isn't really a part of you. And you have no, no sexual feelings. So you can't get interested in fellas. You can't carry on a relationship with a fellow. It's just not possible. There's nothing there. And so the fact of getting married or having children is just not for you. <laughs> <laughs>